hello everyone so today we are going to discuss with alzheimer's disease so alzheimer's disease is something like a degenerative brain disorder and it usually starts in the late middle age or in the old age so hope you have remembered the uh, film called tanmatra and how the mohanlal uh, depicted the character so it results in progressive memory loss impaired thinking and disorientation and changes in personality and the mood so it is first described by dr eloy alzheimer and that's why the name uh, of the disease came like that and he is a german he was a german physician and uh, he described the disease in 1906 the of the alzheimer's disease actually it is uh, the exact cause is unknown but there are several factors which are thought to be implicated to start the disease or the or progress the disease and the first thing is neurochemical factor neurochemical factor in that if there is reduction in the acetylcholine acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter in the brain which helps in bringing out or building the connections between the neurons and it increases the memory power so there is an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase which destroy or disintegrate the acetylcholine and that enzyme will be dominating in this disease so acetylcholine will be damaged and thus the memory will be lost or decreased and next is somatostatin uh, and substance p and there is an excess of norepinephrine uh environmental factors like cigarette smoking that have a positive effect in bringing out the alzheimers so fast in the life infections like some viral infection that can affect the brain okay and some metals and their toxins and and also certain industrial waste and so and uh, certain toxins and prolonged use lipsins as to and these statin use that is for a long time in some individual may have a profound effect in bringing out the alzheimer's disease in early so early in their life and the third is genetic and immunological factors some factors like ps1 which are found in chromosome 14 and ps2 uh, which are found in chromosome 1 and app it's called the uh it's called the amyloid beta precursor protein which will be discussed in the following slide and these factors have effect or accelerated effect in bringing out the alzheimer's disease risk factors or the factors which predisposes an individual to get the disease are down syndrome so mind the apostrophe and uh family history that is uh, if our the if the first degree or second degree relatives of the patient have of a particular person have family history of alzheimer's disease and then there there is a chance of getting the condition chronic hypertension head injuries gender especially the women have greater risk to get alzheimer's disease smoking and alcoholism in excess so these are the risk factors of alzheimer's disease and coming to the pathophysiology in pathophysiology there are two hallmark features in the brain of an alzheimer's person the first thing is the presence of beta amyloid plaques or simply it's called the senile plaques these are the deposits of protein and the cellular material that accumulates outside and around the nerve cell so mind the word outside okay so focus it on outside yeah so the beta amyloid plaques are found outside the nerve cells or the neurons and the second characteristic feature of alzheimer's disease is neurofibrillary tangles or nft the neurofibrillary tangles or nft are twisted or tangled fibers that build up inside the nerve cells called tau amyloid protein okay so these twisted fibers are actually the tangled protein called tau the tau protein will be tangled that is it is the result of hyperphosphorylation of the tau protein that makes it looks tangled or it looks twisted 
and it deposit inside the nerve cell okay so plaques are found outside and tangles are found inside so remember these two things so let's go in detail there are four postulated hypotheses that can make an individual to develop alzheimer's disease the first thing is as i told you cholinergic hypothesis that is a reduction in acetylcholine neurotransmitters due to over secretion or over activity of acetylcholine esterase enzyme and the next is oxidative stress hypothesis that is if there is a free radical production due to uh, oxidative stress in the body then that can damage the neurons and produce the plaques or tau protein nft the third is hyperphosphorylated tau protein synthesis that we'll be discussing in the following slide so there is a deposition of and also there is a deposition of amyloid protein that is a, that is separate okay so there are hyperphosphorylation of tau protein and there is a deposition of amyloid protein and also the fourth one is metal ion hypothesis that is if the metal some heavy metals or some metal act as a toxin in the body or there is a imbalance in the homeostasis of some metal in the body that can act uh, predispose an individual to get alzheimers so these all four or five factors that can cause the loss of neuron mass or that can cause an atrophy in the temporofrontal cortex and also in the parietal lobe okay and also in the parietal lobe atrophy means loss of neurons or the reduction in the size of the neurons so these two causes or the these two events will initiate inflammation and also the deposition of amyloid beta plaques and neurofibrillary tangles that is nft will make alzheimer's disease this is the pathophysiology of alzheimer's disease so how uh, the tau protein and the amyloid proteins are formed that is the plaque is formed we'll look the first thing is the formation of plaques how the plaques are formed so before going to learn about the plaque formation we should know about the amyloid precursor protein that is app so this amyloid precursor protein is a big or long protein and it is a transmembrane protein transmembrane means it is situated between or uh, in the membrane of the neuron okay in the membrane of the neuron so it's a transmembrane protein that helps in neuron growth survival and post injury repair so the amyloid precursor protein is getting split up by an enzyme called gamma secretase and beta secretase so that causes the fragment formation of fragment called amyloid beta which have a length of 39 to 43 amino acids okay so these amyloid beta protein or a beta accumulate outside the neuron and those accumulation is called plaque senile plaque okay so thus alzheimer's disease alzheimer's disease is called proteopathy because it's a disease of misfolded protein it's a protein misfolding disease so let's uh, see this diagram and clear out very easily so this is the neuron membrane neuronal membrane inside and outside is shown and the two pegs like structures are beta amyloid protein or sorry the amyloid precursor protein which is a big protein or it's a long protein and the enzymes called protease the protease the particular name is gamma secretase and beta secretase so these secretase enzymes are a member of protease family okay so that's why the protease is given the name is given and these two enzymes will cut the amyloid precursor protein into fragments okay and thus the beta amyloid protein fragment is getting separated out and it is accumulated outside the neuron so that's the plaque here that the red color accumulation is called the beta amyloid so this is how the plaque is formed and the next is formation of nft nft or neurofibrillary tangles uh, so before going that we must learn about tau proteins 
will uh, say so every neuron has a cell like any other cell the neuron has also a cytoskeleton made up of microtubules and these microtubules are being stabilized by a protein called tau okay so these tau uh, are when phosphorylated will be stabilizing these microtubules okay so in alzheimer's disease the tau undergoes hyperphosphorylation okay the tau undergo hyperphosphorylation normal conditions they will be just phosphorylating and stabilizing the microtubules in alzheimer's disease they undergo hyperphosphorylation and they begin to pair up with other threads like this and that creates the tangles that is called the neurofibrillary tangles so the alzheimer's disease is called the topathy okay so we'll study from this diagram easily so neuron has got a cytoskeleton called microtubules and these microtubules when get hyperphosphorylated that is the toe get when get then when the toe gets hypo hyperphosphorylated they will be pairing up like a helical filament that's called the phfs and the microtubules will be detached and these will be pairing up due to the hyperphosphorylation of the toe and the paired filaments will be tangled fibrillary tangles and this will be accumulated or build inside build up inside the neuron okay so these will be build up or accumulated inside the neuron so this is how the nft is being formed so this is the detailed pathophysiology of alzheimer's disease so we'll go into the clinical features three stages in the alzheimer's disease early stage middle stage and the late stage early stage there will be episodes of forgetfulness even though they are leading a very normal life and they don't aware they have a memory loss at all and but they forget the names of the family of the, of the or the friends still they are just taking as a casual thing and confusion in the situation outside the familiar one so these are the signs of the early stage alzheimer's disease and the middle stage will have a little more severity that is greater difficulty in remembering the things which have learned very recently like phone numbers or names and all and deepening confusion the confusion will get very deepened or severe in many circumstances and there will be problem with sleep that is sleeplessness will be there and trouble knowing where they are okay they will go into a shopping complex or a, a place and they will be suddenly feeling lost okay and late stage that is having more severe signs poor ability to think problems in speaking that is they actually miss out or forget the words okay and repeat the same conversation that is uh, they are like they think that the thing is not communicated uh, still and they just converse the thing repeatedly more they'll be more abusive they use more abusive language sometimes they'll be more anxious and they'll be more paranoid paranoid means they act differently altered uh, thinking status will be there okay so these are the clinical features in the alzheimer's disease so i'm not going into the treatment so if you have any doubts please feel free to talk with me or text me and thank you so much